So what is AirDrop? AirDrop lets you quickly and easily transfer files between iPhones, iPads, and Macs. It uses Bluetooth to broadcast and point-to-point -point Wi-Fi to transfer data. That makes it fast, efficient, and secure. The only rub is you must be within 30 feet of the person that you want to airdrop something to. When you're using airdrop between iPhones and iPads, you can airdrop photos, videos, contacts, voice memos, map locations, and any and everything else that appears in the share sheet. If we haven't met, I'm Ellen from Ellen's Tips for iOS and I help seniors master their iPhones and iPads. Let's get started. To turn AirDrop on, you need to access the Control Center. And to do that, you'll swipe down from the upper right corner of your device, whether it's an iPhone or an iPad, if you have a newer device, you'll swipe down, the Control Center appears, and then you want a long press on the area where Bluetooth and Wi-Fi are, so just push and hold pops up another menu, and now you just want to tap on AirDrop. And you'll see that you have uh, a menu appears, and you have Receiving Off, Contacts Only, or Everyone. Contacts Only requires more work, as you and the person that you want to AirDrop with both have to be logged into iCloud, and you each have to be in the Others Contacts section. Everyone is easier, but means random people you don't know can send you airdrops. If you don't recognize the sender or don't want to receive the files, you can always choose not to accept them. And then you have the option to turn receiving off. Older model devices aren't compatible with airdrop, so you must be running iOS 7, iPadOS 13, or on a Mac. OX 10.10. .10. Even if one of your devices is compatible, if you want to airdrop to your other devices, they must be compatible as well. You can airdrop files from any iPhone or iPad that includes the built-in share sheet. And you can share to anyone and any of their devices that show up in the share sheet. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and tap into my Photos app on the iPad. And uh, I'm going to tap on the Share icon, which is the box with the arrow coming out of it. And on the iPad, in portrait mode, it's going to be in the upper right-hand corner of your device. And on the iPhone, it will be in the lower left-hand corner of your device. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on the Share icon. And I'm just going to share a couple of photos. So I already have one selected. I'll select another one. And then I'm going to tap on the airdrop icon. It looks like two devices or people are available. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on that. And then I'm going to choose Ellen Sweeney. So I'm going to tap on that. And then you'll see on my iPhone, a, a, a message pops up and says, would you like to accept this? If I hit accept, it automatically will add those particular photos into my Photos app. So files sent through AirDrop will appear in the app that typically handles those sorts of files. So if you send photos, they're going to show up in the Photos app. If you send documents, uh, they're going to show up in the Files app. So whichever app you're sharing from, that's where those particular files will show up. If you're having trouble with AirDrop, there are some steps you can take to correct the behavior on your iPhone and iPad so that you can get back to transferring files with ease. Here are some of the steps you can try. Swipe down from the upper right corner of your iPhone or iPad to access the control center. Push and hold on the box that has the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connection. Tap on AirDrop and then change the receiving mode. Turn it off for a second and then turn it back on to contacts only or try everyone and see if that works. 
if toggling airdrop itself doesn't get things going, now you need to escalate to the radio area. So to do that, we're going to tap back out of Control Center, and we're going to tap into the Settings app. And now we're going to choose Bluetooth. And then we're going to toggle that Bluetooth switch off and toggle it back on to see if that will make the connection. If that doesn't work, the next step would be to come back to Settings, tap on Wi-Fi, toggle Wi-Fi off, wait for a few seconds, and then go ahead and toggle Wi-Fi back on. It used to be that you could just do that from the control center, but it no longer turns uh, Bluetooth or Wi-Fi completely off. It just simply stops the current connection, but it leaves things like AirPods, Apple Pencil, and your Apple Watch uh, still available. So you actually have to come into the settings area and toggle those switches off. If these steps don't work, as a last resort, you'll want to reset your network settings, and that can be a huge pain, but if something has gone wrong with the way your iPhone or iPad connects to other devices, like with AirDrop, it might just be necessary. So what you need to do is you need to come into the Settings app, scroll until you see General, tap on General, scroll to the very bottom, and tap on Reset. And now we only need to reset the network settings. Once this is complete, you'll have to reconnect every Wi-Fi and Bluetooth device you own or use. And then once you're done, check AirDrop again. If it works, it was all worth it. If not, maybe a trip to the Apple Store is in order. So that's it. Now you're ready to use AirDrop. It's truly one of Apple's best features. It has an advantage over other methods because it's fast and can handle large amounts of media and files. Welcome to the world of airdropping on your iPhone and iPad. Enjoy. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.